So if the videos, the other videos in this advanced Unity section were like your 200 and 300 level courses, um, this is going to be a 400 level course. This is multi-blends. And this is where all the theory I've been teaching you in perhaps the past 10 videos is really going to come together. So I'm not going to show you, I'm actually not going to have any slides with theory. We're going to jump right into Unity and we're going to apply everything that we've done up to this point in Unity. It's going to get a little bit uh, bumpy. Hang on. Okay, so multi-blends. Let me first show you how we run into problems with multi-blends. And I'm going to show you a few other things along the way here. So we have a blend here, which is from our green, this green, to this semi. However, if we look at this blend, we see that it is going from our green to fairway, which is not what we want. Okay, we do not have a fairway strip in here. Um, we might, and I'm going to show you in a second why we, we might, and we should, um, but we don't in this particular case. So we need to fix this blend because we've got this hard line. We want this to go from green to semi instead of going from green to fairway, which has given us this hard line. So how do we fix that in here? Well, pretty simple, right? Um, option number one is we could just take uh, our semi and drop it into this spot and create our new blend or that, that would be simple we could do that well, let's do set mesh materials let me just show you a quick how we do this if you want to do a lot of these at the same time we could come in here and we could say hey my green blend um, I want this to be, um, and I already did this, but I need to change this to semi. So I want my green to blend to semi. And now when I come over here and I right click on my green blend, I can say set default materials. And you can see now that my semi is my blend here instead of fairway. And I create new blend and that's magically fixed. So I could now go to my green blends and if i type in here green underscore dash you can see i can see all my blends so i could hold down this this i'm holding down control and i've got all these blends i can now come over here i can right click set default materials and now all these blends let me x out of this now all these blends that we're talking about are going to be this material okay to the semi rough so how can i show you guys that well let me go to one of these other blends up here and show you so here's another green and this one should have been updated so now it was this green to semi rough okay um and now if i create new blend here you can see that that's been updated as well. So now I got a nice blend, which looks good between green and semi rough. However, let's go over here and what happened? Well, in this particular spot from here, let me zoom out a tad, to here, this is not um, semi, this is fairway. So now we have a blend that really we need a multi blend. From here to here, we need to blend on a semi rough. And from this area, we need it to blend a fairway. Now, an easy, I wouldn't say easy fix, a way to avoid situations like this is to make sure that whatever blend or shapes you have, say this green, we could have extended this fairway all the way around it to give a fairway strip around before the semi. And then we could have just done semi to fairway and then another blend from that fairway to semi. That was one way to avoid situations like this. But let's say you don't want that look and we need to do a multi-blend because a multi-blend could be used in other areas. For example, this, this bunker, if it's touching multiple areas, we might need to do a multi-blend there as well. So that's what multi-blend is. So how do we fix this and how do we change this area to be a different kind of blend? Well, we go, need to go back into Blender. And if we open up Blender and we go to that particular area here, uh, let's see, where are we? That's over here. I say I can highlight this guy, numpad period, and zoom right into it. Let me back out. So here is the blend that we're referencing. And here it's pretty clear that this part of the blend out here is touching semi, and this part of the blend in here is, is touching fairway. So what we need to do 
is so if you look at the attribute, we can see that the black is going all the way around. So what we need to do is this section that goes from here to over here and the outside vertices, which are now painted black, we need to paint them either blue or green. Okay. Now remember, we only have four colors to work with. So in theory, you can only have your blend touching three different meshes because red is the inside. So we could have blue and green available. So if you have this blend, this, these blends touching too many, you're going to be shit out of luck. Okay. You can only have it touching three different because we're limited on the number of channels. So how do we paint this? Well, it's pretty simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this blend. As you can see, I've highlighted. I'm going to tab into edit mode. Now, when I tab into edit mode, I want to go to my vertex selection tool, which is right here. And now you'll see that I can click and I can highlight vertices if I click them. Okay, so I'm clicking on these vertices. However, I need to select multiple vertices. Specifically, I need to select the ones on the outside here. Now, if I hold down Alt, okay, and I select one of the outside vertices here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit to help you guys see this. If I hold down Alt, and I select one of these outside vertices, it's gonna select all the vertices on the outside of that entire blend. So just the outside ones. Well, how do we get just these ones right here instead? Well, I can hold down, um, I can hit the circle key, which is C, and this puts me into a different mode. And if I hold down Shift, you can see as I drag around here, and I want to make sure that I hit them all, I'm actually unselecting, if I hold down shift, I'm unselecting these other vertices. So I'm holding down shift as I go. Now I have to escape in order to move. So I'm holding down my middle mouse button and then shift and I can move over here. I'm gonna hit circle select again, hold down shift, and now I'm going to come over here and I'm unselecting all these vertices. Unselecting. So just to show you how this tool works, if I don't hold down shift and I drag, I'm now adding all these vertices. But now I've got these vertices and I've got the outside ones on the area we want to change selected, and that's not what I want. So I'm going to hold down shift now and unselect all these. So now that I'm confident, I'm going to hit escape to get out of circle select mode. I'm going to hit N to hide my menu. And I'm going to look at these guys pretty close here. And I can see, if I zoom in here, I've got this vertice selected, but not this one. And then all the ones around here I have selected as well. Right? And now I want to vert paint those. So I'm going to hit N to bring up my OPC tools. I've got my custom vertex paint section open right here. And I'm now going to select blue. And I'm going to apply color to selected verts. And now you will see that I have blue vertex painting. So now I'm going from red to blue. And that looks pretty good. Now it's not going to be perfect in certain areas like this where they touch, but it's going to be much better than it was before. And I actually might even want to unselect this one. Let me come back. I'm just going to select this vertice and I'm going to paint that one black. So let me go up here to black and apply. And now this one's painted black to here, and these are all blue. Now what I need to do is I need to re-export this mesh. And you remember in the other videos, we can selectively export our meshes. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to tab out of export mode, or of edit mode. And I'm going to go to export mode, export selected FBX, enter. And where does that end up? Well, it ends up in my FBX folder right here. So let me refresh this. And I'm going to sort by date modified. So 12.43 PM, here is our new blend right there. I'm going to copy it, Control C. I'm going to come into the FBX folder of my Unity project, and I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to overwrite the one that is in there. And now I'm going to head back into Unity. And Unity is going to do an update on that guy. Now, so what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing that we have this blend here, but we don't have anything assigned to this blue channel. 
So how do we fix that? Well, before we fix that, let's verify that we got this vertex painted correctly. So if you come over here, we got our blend selected. We're gonna do show vertex painting. And yep, okay, so here we got red to black and here we have red to blue. So that looks correct. And it looks like it lines up pretty well as, as well. Okay, so let's just hide the vertex painting again. Now you might remember if there was a tool, was there a tool that we could easily swap channels between materials? Well, yes, there was. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to take our fairway material, which is our red here. Okay, so let me do show vertex painting. This red channel, okay, I'm gonna hide that, needs to go to the blue channel of our blend. So show vertex painting, remember this is blue. So we need to take the red from our fairway to the blue of this blend. So how do we do that? Well, we have, if you recall, our, where is it? Uh, GSP, Material Channel Editor. And if I bring that up, you can see here it is. I can take my fairway material right here. So I highlighted my fairway, click on my fairway material. Down here, I'm gonna drag it up into my source material. And there it is, we have our red here. Now let's go back to our blend. Okay, there's our blend. So here's our blend material. Highlight that, drag that into our target material. And what do we wanna do? We wanted to take our red channel material and send it to our blue of our blend. Let's do that. And now magically, look what happens. Now let's just do an update materials, just in case. I'm never sure when I need to do that, but it doesn't hurt to always do it, right? And now when I zoom out, let me click away so you guys can see, look how slick that looks. Now, now what I said, remember earlier that these blends aren't exactly ever perfect. So here you can see that that blend isn't right. So we could go back into Blender and maybe move that vertice back, the one that I changed from black to blue. But over here, let's see what it looks like. Over here, it looks really darn good. So there's that blend. I couldn't even tell where it was at. That's how good it is. Here it is. That looks pretty good over here. I mean, it's just a little bump. I could barely tell. But now you can see that we have a multi-blend here. And this whole green is looking much better. This can get a little bit tedious if you're doing this in a lot of areas. So that's where it goes. Does it make more sense for you just to inkscape differently to avoid situations like this. So that's something you have to plan in your workflow if you want to have to deal with multi-blends or not.